Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Student Life on YouTube, the last Student Life of 2020. Man, I tell you what, it's been a fantastic year. If you are watching on YouTube and we have met before, chances are we met on this very same night last year for the first time. The Christmas party was my first time being here with you guys and we had a ton of fun. And I'm so bummed that tonight should have been our in-person Christmas party where we wear these these crazy get-ups and have games and, and prizes and a ton of fun but you know what it's going to make the time that we get back together in January that much sweeter that's right you heard it here first plan to mark your schedules for January Wednesday nights from from 6 30 to 8 like always we'll be back here in this building and I am so excited for that I can't wait before we dive into tonight's sermon our last sermon of our our holy series just a couple of quick announcements as always again tomorrow we're starting another Bible study these have been amazing. There's been so many of you that are participating each and every single day, and I love seeing that. So just like the last ones, we have a Bible study that is starting tomorrow in the YouVersion Bible app. It's based on the same thing we're talking about tonight, God's love. So if you want to participate in that, reach out to your small group leader to get the link, or head over to the Rip and Student Life Instagram and follow the link in the bio to sign up for tomorrow's week-long Bible study. The last announcement that I have for you guys is obviously tonight is our last student life of the year. It's been a blast this year. We're wrapping up our series called Holy. And next week, make sure that you follow us on Instagram because Monday through Thursday, we're posting competitions on our story and the winner of each day is going to get a prize and we have a bunch of different prizes from gift cards to mugs and Culver's. We got a $25 Amazon gift card. We got candy. We got water bottles. We got stickers, all kinds of things. So you're not going to want to miss out on that starting next Monday. And with that, Let's dive into tonight's sermon. Tonight, man, on, on Instagram Live, we're, we're asking the question, what's your favorite thing to do in the snow? We got our first good snowfall of the year that's going to hang around for the winter probably. I love snow and I want to know what your favorite thing to do in the snow is. Me personally, I love to go snowboarding, sledding, I'll make a snowman, tons of fun things to do in the snow. What's your favorite thing to do in the snow? Are you are you somebody that hates snow altogether? I don't know. So there, there, are, there are some of you weirdos out there that really just hate snow. You know what I always say to people like that? Move somewhere else. There's not every state that gets snow. There's plenty of places where you can live that doesn't get snow. So if you hate snow, be gone. Yeah. I personally, I love me some snow. One thing that, that I don't care for is when it's cold out and, and there's no snow. Every time winter comes around, I have this saying. I say it every year. I say there's no point in, in it being cold out unless there's snow. Like, what's the point of it being cold unless there's snow? Snow, like, it takes away all the, the dark dreariness of winter. Like, it, it makes all the ugly aspect, excuse me, ugly aspects, the gray grossness of winter, and, and it makes it beautiful again. When, when we get lots of snow, it kind of just, it seems like things slow down a little bit. Like the days are shorter, there's less sun, and things seem to slow down a little bit. You got to drive slower in the snow, and, and then things get quieter. Like you ever experience like a heavy snowfall, and, and you're outside playing in the snow, and, and you stop for a minute. And it's snowing and everything is quiet and it's white and bright and it's like this magical moment. Now, 
I may be I may be exaggerating a bit on that, but but when we get a good snowfall, that that's how I feel. I love it. It, it slows me down. It's it's peaceful and serene, and and it reminds me of this old church song. It, the song it talks about the cleaning effect that that snow has. It says it says something to the effect of of being washed clean as snow. And I always think of that when we get a fresh snowfall, like all the ugliness is, is washed clean. And, and the song, though, the song, instead of talking about like snow washing away or, or covering up the ugly dreariness of winter, the song is actually talking about washing or covering up the, the ugly dreariness of our sins. And, and this metaphor of snow covering or washing away our sins actually comes straight from the Bible. There are a couple of verses that, that use this metaphor of, of snow, excuse me, of snow washing away the, the ugliness of our sins. The first one comes, comes from Psalms chapter 51, where, where David talks of the forgiveness and love of God. And, and when he says this, he says, Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. The second verse that I want to, want to talk about that, that brings up the same metaphor of snow washing away our sins comes from the book of Isaiah. It's another Old Testament book. And Isaiah is relaying a message to the people of Judah from God. And, and he says, The Lord says, Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, I will make them as white as wool. And this imagery of, of the pureness of snow covering or, or cleaning the ugliness of our sins, it, it actually comes true, right? Like all things in the Bible do, it, it comes true and it comes true through the life of Jesus. In, in our third week of our Holy Series tonight, is our third week of our Holy Series, we're looking at love, God's love, and specifically the perfect love of Jesus. This series is, is all about what Christmas truly means for us as Christians, right? That's what we've been saying each week. It's all about what the birth of Jesus means for us. How, how, what, what does that mean for us as Christians? How do we respond to the birth of Jesus? The last two weeks, we found that the birth of Jesus gives us hope, right? It gives us hope for our future here on earth and hope for eternity in heaven with Jesus. We also found that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and that we can experience true peace through him no matter what the circumstances around are. And both of these things the hope we have in Jesus and the peace that comes from Jesus are a result of his love for us. Many of us know the, the, the popular verse from John 3.16, right? So, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's pretty familiar, right? We see it on signs at sporting events and all kinds of things. But verse 17 goes on to say that God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. See, Jesus came into this world to do exactly what David and Isaiah were talking about. To be the sacrifice that turns our sins white as snow. If you've ever read the Old Testament, it can be confusing at times to read, like all these crazy rituals and animal sacrifices and laws that the, that the people of Israel had to do in order to have a healthy relationship with God. It can be, it can be confusing at times. And, and maybe you've read some of the Old Testament before and asked yourself, like, how is the God of the Old Testament the same God of the New Testament? And I'll tell you what. It's because of Jesus. It's because Jesus was born into the world. It's because Jesus was born into the world that we no longer have to, to follow all those laws. 
that we no longer have to offer animal sacrifices or perform these rituals to have a relationship with God. Jesus came into this world, the birth that we celebrate at Christmas, in order to be the final sacrifice that we can have a healthy relationship with God. And that happens as we celebrate Easter, right? God loves us so much that he gave up his son to be killed so that our sins could be washed clean. So, so if we know that, if we read our Bibles and we know that and you hear that from me and we understand that, what does that then mean for us, right? Okay, cool, Pastor Danny, but what does that mean for us? How, how do we respond? Jesus is born and that's what we celebrate each Christmas. And his life and, and death means that we no longer have to follow all the crazy rules and regulations of Old Testament. Great. And it means our sins are washed away. Awesome. But what does that mean for us? How do we respond to that? Should, should, should we go on sinning and living our normal lives? Does it, does it mean that we can do whatever it is that we want to do? I think we know probably the answer to that question, right? In 1 Corinthians, Paul says on, on multiple different occasions that all things are now lawful. This is after Jesus died, right? And he says, all things are now lawful. But not everything is good for you. He says, you have the right to do anything. But not everything is good for you. Not everything is helpful. Just because we have been set free by the life and death of Jesus doesn't mean that we should go on doing whatever it is that we want to do. In fact, it means the exact opposite. The love that Jesus has for us should motivate us to respond. Should motivate us to do something. To live a life that reflects that love that Jesus has for us onto others. The fact that God sends his son into this world to die for us should motivate us to respond with love for him. And then to shine that love onto others. Tonight in your small groups, you're going to read through Romans 5 and 6. And, and if you're not able to make your small groups or your small group isn't meeting, I really I encourage you to read Romans 5 and 6 because they give a great breakdown of, of this relationship between us and God and our sins and his love and, and, and how we should respond to his love for us. So, as we close out our Holy Series tonight, the pinnacle of God's love is expressed through the birth of Jesus. It's Jesus who gives us hope. It's Jesus who gives us peace. And it's the love of Jesus that sets us free from the heavenly consequences of our sins. The question then is, knowing these things, knowing all that Jesus has to offer us, knowing all that Jesus has done for us, how will you respond? Have a Merry Christmas, and we will see you in the new year. Can't wait to give out some prizes next week.